Hi everyone, I'm here with a Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Looks like we have a short reading today. Um, I, did, I am working on a prayer list. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the prayer request right now. Please keep the following people in prayer. Sherm, uh, Rhonda Karshner and Jimmy Myers, Cindy and Jim, Dora, Pat, Jason Dempsey, Elizabeth Jeffries, Garnet Boyer. She'll be having surgery to replace a valve or vein, something in her heart. Um, that is February 27th. Joyce, March. what? No? Oh, sorry. March. This month on the 27th. Sorry about that. Um, Joyce White, Layla and her son Emil, Abby and Liam, um, Nellie, and my all my nieces and nephews, five being Nellie's, um, Gabe, Toby, Kaylee, Kinsley and Olson, and Cohen, and of course Abby and Jimmy. And please keep my dad, Randy, post in your prayers. He had a heart attack last month. Please keep Penny Miller in your prayers. She has cancer bad. Please pray for Tim and Shannon. Uh, Tim and Shannon Dunn. Tim is really bad with cancer. He's dying from, from cancer. And they're going to be having a benefit for him. I believe it's next month, and it's close to us, I think. But anyway, I, I wrote it down somewhere, and I'm not exactly sure yet, because I write it down to put stuff somewhere so I don't forget or lose it, and then I forget and lose it and not know where I put it. So <laughs> I still don't know. But if I can't find it where I wrote it down, I'm going to go back and find out when it is, and I'll put it in the description section of this video and uh, please keep Carly and um, her family in your prayers please keep Henry Reffitt in your prayers and that's who all I've got so far like I say if you guys have a prayer request you know somebody that needs prayer just let me know and I will put them down you can email me at missycrabtree at yahoo.com all lowercase or you can comment in this video and if you're on my facebook you can message there if you want okay so today we're going to be reading mark chapter 16 jesus's resurrection psalm 55 and proverbs chapter 11 verse 7. I don't know why they didn't do, you know, this part closer to Easter. But I don't know, that's just the way the way it is. But as we know, it's it's this month. The last day of the month, I believe. Alright. Jesus has risen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salem bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples, and Peter, 
he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. This goes back to blessed are those who believe without seeing. Some people only believe if they see something. If it never snowed, they believe there never is this thing called snow. White stuff falling from the sky, covering the ground. Never seen it. I don't believe it. Okay? Anything. Anything in history or anything. They could say that about. You don't want to have that kind of attitude. Blessed are those who believe without seeing guys. The Pharisees, teachers of the law, believed. Or, I mean, they seen, but they still didn't believe. They seen the miracles and stuff Jesus done. But that did not matter to them. Let's see. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. Eleven instead of twelve because... Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus, had hung himself, remember? So he's dead. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. And just like I said before, and that's what we're stopping of Mark 16, that was all of chapter 16 of Mark. Um, some books go into more detail than others do. Like this, um, it goes from where the eleven seen him and everything, and then it, you know, then they believe, and then it goes straight to Jesus ascending into heaven. But Jesus was on earth for forty days before he ascended to heaven. Forty days. It wasn't just like an overnight thing. He was on this earth for 40 days and many seen him and his disciples seen him rise into heaven on a cloud and the same way will he come back down it says and like other books go into greater detail about them not believing and because when Jesus appeared to the eleven well when Jesus appeared to some of them the only one that wasn't with them was Thomas who they also called Didymus. And he didn't believe them because he hadn't seen Jesus like they did. Just like the others didn't believe when Peter and them say, hey, we seen him. And the women said, we seen him. The Lord talked to us. We seen the Lord. So Thomas is like, I will not believe that this is true 
until I see him myself and put my hands in the wounds on his hands and side. And Jesus, next time Jesus appeared to them, Thomas was there. Didymus was there. And Jesus said, put your hand here and here. And let's just say, then he believed. Now, I want to read this part to you guys. Uh, it's connected with the thing here. Um, when Jesus, wait, here it is. The earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses 9 through 20. It's like I said, some go into greater detail than others. <clears throat> All right, so now let's go to our psalm today. It has... 23 verses. The psalm today is for the director of music with stringed instruments, a mascal of David. And you know we love David's songs. They are so beautiful. The whole book of psalms is beautiful. Wouldn't it be nice just to have a book of psalms and read, you know, sit down one day and just read a bunch of the psalms and because they're so pretty, like the, the Song of Solomon and stuff, that's, that's a good one. Solomon being one of King David's sons, who became king after him. All right. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would, fl I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Lord, confuse the wicked, confound their words. For I see violence and strife in the city day and night. They prowl about on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never to leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide, but it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God. As we walked about among the worshipers, let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the realm of the dead for evil finds lodging among them. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me. Even though many oppose me, God, who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them because they have no fear for God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His talk is as smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken, but you, God, will bring down the wicked 
into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half their days, but as for me, I trust in you. All right, guys, and that was the Maskell of David. Psalm 55. All right, and we'll be ending today's Bible reading with one proverb, chapter 11, verse 7. Hopes placed in mortals die with them. All the promise of their power comes to nothing. It comes to nothing. Amen. One thing's for sure. Even the most wealthiest, the most powerful, influ influential person in this world, in the whole world, if, if everybody like loved this person and what they want done, it gets done or you pay. You know what I mean? They have more money than anybody in the world can do whatever they want to whoever they want. They're still going to die. They can't live forever. They are not immortal. They are mortal, just like you, just like I. They will die and meet their maker, just like we all will, and have to answer for what we've done, what they've done. And if, I mean, and then God takes it. It's in God's hands. But yes, we all have that in common. We all were born. We all will die. And when you die, do you want to be with God and Jesus in heaven, in paradise? Eternity. Eternity for your soul. Don't worry about your body. Your soul is what you need to worry about. Your soul is eternal. Your body is not. So please, please keep that in mind. Some die young, some die old. We never know when God says our number is up. you remember that as much as you love your child, God loves you a million times more and more because we're his children as well. He made us. So just remember that. They are being well taken care of. Well taken care of. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.